Hello and welcome to a very odd, special, whatever you want to call it episode. This is this is a basically rebuild episode, essentially. Um, don't pay attention to this. I don't have any of this set up, but uh, I kind of you know since I didn't do any videos uh, of this vehicle project. I just have pictures, and uh, it's of a car, not a pickup. Just thought I'd start start out with this picture of uh, all my tires removed off of one of my vehicles. Um, so yeah, I guess we can get started on that. So like I said, yeah, it'll be kind of an odd episode, just me commentating over pictures. And yeah, you should be able to see my cursor there. Okay. So this is the car. Uh, this is a 2010 Chevy Impala. And I had somebody helping me with this one. Um, I'm an old school mechanic, kind of shade tree, shade tree mechanic, basically. I do all, all my own mechanic work. And, uh, Basically, I, I'm an old, what you'd call an old school mechanic. I work on the old stuff. You know, obviously like this. <laughs> like this, this vehicle, I'm not afraid of anything on it. I could take this vehicle completely apart, every single piece, every single bolt. Have somebody, uh, you know, basically just come and mess around all my stuff. Mix it all up and I could still put it back together basically as it was uh, you know nothing nothing scares me on this as this a 96 Chevy Silverado yeah I got a big old rust hole there <laughs> don't worry about it <laughs> okay anyway back to the car so this car yeah 2010 Chevy Impala has a 3.5 liter v6 in it and instead of being rear-wheel drive like the pickup um, this one's front wheel drive. So if you don't know what front wheel drive is, obviously, uh, rear wheel drive is where the rear wheels are what pushes the car forward and backwards. And a front wheel drive is where the, um, the front tires move the vehicle forward and backwards. Basically the drive tires, what propels the vehicle in the direction that it's wanting to go. And obviously four wheel drive. It's just basically um, like this pickup. This pickup's normally a two-wheel drive, but it's a four-wheel drive vehicle, which means that four-wheel drive is engaged. Both axles propel the vehicle in the direction it's trying to go rather than just one. Uh, you know, here's an axle and here's an axle. And this car's just front-wheel drive, so it's just the front tires and transmissions in the front as well as the engine, and instead of oh, like a rear-wheel drive where the engine sits toward the front of the car, like the front of the engine's toward the front of the car, this one, the engine sits sideways, so the front of the engine's over here. So, yeah, that's basically my intro to this, kind of explaining. Yeah, I've never done an engine like this before. This was a very, very interesting, I should say, very interesting engine to uh, mess around with and oh and uh, I should also mention too the only reason like my previous videos are like a picture slideshow thing with music in the background I did those many years ago back when YouTube used to be a lot more lax on having copyrighted material in your video just as long as you weren't you know just taking the music and just playing it on YouTube uh, they allowed me to have a picture slideshow with the music so and they no longer do that so I'll just have to commentate it for this one so you know hopefully it's not too boring and uh, I hope you enjoy hearing about mechanics if you're here maybe you want to know or maybe you know about mechanics doesn't really matter it's uh, whatever to me but uh, welcome and uh, all right let's move on 
So this is just me just taking pictures of everything because I want to know where the electricals go. Basically, so hey, uh, here's the engine here. Here's the transmission down here. And, you know, air box. All kinds of, you know, neat little things. Very weird. I've done front wheel drive cars before, just not nothing this new. I worked on a lot of older stuff. Basically, early, early 2000s and like 2005 and then on back to you know 80s and 90s and 70s as well so yeah I would be called basically an old-school mechanic or I just know about the old-school stuff all this new electronical crap <laughs> a lot harder for me to grasp concepts still the same just a lot more other stuff added on and again, another picture. So this is the front of the engine. And usually you can tell because that's where the serpentine belt is. And where all the pulleys are. So alternator, power steering pump. Uh, down there is the uh, AC compressor. And the water pump's underneath here somewhere. And electrical box. And that's where the battery was. So yeah, basically, I guess I didn't explain. The way... Uh, the reason, the way, the reason that we did this was because this entire engine, almost every gasket was leaking somewhere. It was leaking out oil, it was leaking out antifreeze, it was leaking out, or coolant, I should say, in many names for it. It was leaking out uh, transmission fluid. It was just a big old mess. And the entire sides and bottom of the motor and transmission are just completely gunked. In every, just pretty much every fluid except for brake fluid, which is over here somewhere. Oh, another picture of the engine. This is the entirety of the engine bay with engine and transmission all together. Obviously, some things have been removed. Power steering pump ended up over here because I didn't want to disconnect the power steering lines other than the return line, which comes up right about here. So I disconnected that and then just pushed this off to the side, you know, just to make it easy. Because you can't remove the power steering lines, or at least the, the main line, you can't uh, take that off that line without removing the entire pump anyway. So I'm just like, yeah, I'll just put it over here where the battery was. We took out the air, bot, or the, uh, air system, little air tube, and whatnot. Just basically removing as least as possible just removing what's necessary to pull the engine entirely so we can replace all the gaskets and seals um, and i took this picture too because the person that owns this car it was the person before that had an accident with a pole they hit this pole pretty dang hard because they bent that they bent this um they bent the whole framing for the radiator and AC condenser, or uh, whatever you want to call it. And as well as this, they tried to straighten it as obvious by this being pulled forward again and down. So they probably had it hooked to the floor. Yeah, some shops will do that. They'll be able to hook the car to the floor and straighten out frames and stuff like that. <clears throat> Excuse me. So yeah, and this bar was never attached. It, it it doesn't line up with the two holes that are here, like this side does. There's two holes here. This is supposed to line up here, but it never did, and it just flopped around. <laughs> ever since the the person that owns this car, ever since they had it, and for obvious reasons, I'm not going to mention names or what my affiliation with them is. So let's move on. Some more pictures of the accident. You can see this is all bent up and just crazy. Before, the headlights would not stay in the car. I don't know. I can actually show you that. So here, we'll scroll in. You can see there's two screws here. These are sheet metal screws. Sheet metal screws holding this headlight in because uh, this is all broken and behind here. There's usually like two slots where this headlight goes in and then a piece comes down to hold it in 
Same with this side. You can see this side's got a screw in it. And there's supposed to be something in there, but part of it's broken. And it was because they uh, spray painted the bumper uh, poorly. And that's why it peeled. As well as they had the headlights out, but they left the bumper on. And they just spray painted all this. This got sprayed. Um, the whole front of the car behind the bumper got sprayed. This got sprayed. There's you know, overspray just, just absolutely everywhere. It was uh, not the greatest of job. And this plastic, um, since it got spray painted so you know, poorly, basically what happened was the plastic got... It's supposed to be like a... Uh, it's not a hard plastic. It's more of a rubbery style plastic, I guess. Like you can bend it. And, uh, yeah, this went from being a rubbery plastic to a really, um, weak, uh, plastic. So, it just got broken over time. And, uh, they put a new sensor in here, obviously, because that's where the pole hit. I'm assuming it's a pole just because of this point here and this point here being smashed in. And only this fender here got pushed out a little bit and back. I mean, I'm pretty sure they had to replace the hood. And, all, and they went and found a bumper and painted it white. Very poorly, I mean. <laughs> and uh, I'll tell you why later, why they painted it with spray paint. Because uh, of a certain reason, we found out as well why they did that. Alright, so... Uh, this is going to be kind of hard to explain, but basically on this transmission, all the bolts are underneath this. With This is an exhaust crossover from the manifold here. The exhaust crosses over the transmission then, and then to the back of the motor, or to the back of the, the side of the motor, I guess, and then goes down. This transmission has uh, six transmission bolts. It's got five going in from the right to the left. And it's got one going from the left to the right. Well, the problem with that one is that bolt going from the left to the right is between the motor and what you would call the transaxle piece. It's, it's all a transaxle transmission, but the transaxle piece, which gives basically the transmission expands this entire length on the back side, right by the what you'd call the firewall. And then there's a transaxle over here in the to the uh, passenger side front tire. And there's a bolt right next to that. So what we ended up having to do was get two feet worth of extensions just to reach that bolt from the passenger side fender. Well, you take the tire off and then you run two feet of extension all the way to the back where a bolt is, because if you don't remove that transmission's made of aluminum, and if you try to pull the motor with that bolt still in there, you'll snap, you can snap the bell housing and just cause all kinds of damage. And it's a tricky bolt. Not all mechanics know about it, but <laughs> we managed to get it out just fine, as uh, I remembered from my college days, when I went to college for auto mechanics, I got taught that. And yeah, so this is basically, I know that was a very long explanation of, of a bolt. This is basically, uh, we got everything off, and I used the motor mount here. And uh, that goes usually to the front of the car, one of the motor mounts, as a, good, as a lifting spot. And then I used the backside here where the alternator was as another lifting spot. Now, uh, mechanics that have worked on these cars would, would tell you this is not a good spot to hook up to. Yeah, I'm, I've made a bit of a mistake. But uh, it did get pulled out safely. It did get it on, on an engine lift safely. It just, we shouldn't have been lifting from that spot. And I was not paying attention. <laughs> That was my fault, but uh, that's okay. So moving on, yep, 
here's the engine coming out of the vehicle being lifted up hoisted with an engine lift my own personal one and there's the backside you can see this all coated with uh, basically engine oil this valve cover back here was leaking the intake was leaking it was a it was a mess and uh, these two studs here where the nut was for the exhaust there's the exhaust crossover there's where that bolt is that goes from right to left um, it goes in, in through here and screws into the transmission while the other bolts come from left to right and screw into the engine this one screws into the transmission this is the stupid one whatever it came out we got it out easy enough there's yep the, the front side this is the front side of the motor the two front motor mounts are here and here and then yeah you could say oil pan head gaskets and I think this uh, housing here for the oil filter which is right here this housing here that bolts onto the engine is also probably leaking it was just it's a mess the car has 240,000 miles on it which is not bad but yeah it's it is what it is there's the engine on the stand basically and there's the back side the basically the the side of the firewall there's the exhaust um, and then yeah all this freaking gunk that's nasty I've got it kind of tipped sideways, so I was just kind of draining out some more of the coolant there into this drain here. Uh, sealable um, drain pan, basically. Uh, yep, here's the back side. That's where the intake hooks up, or the air tube hooks up. That's the throttle body there. Again, exhaust crossover comes from that side to this side and then to the back of the car. Yep, <clears throat> and you can see here evidence of the valve cover leaking, as well as there was some evidence of uh, the intake leaking fuel a little bit here and there as well. And then this is the engine bay. This is the transmission I was telling you about. This transaxle, um, there's a, uh, a basically drive gears in here. And then there's the axle I was telling you about, the uh, CV axle that hooks into the transmission. The bolt is right there. There's that tricky bolt hole. Crazy. Um, torque converter, and transmission. There's the exhaust piece. We actually had to torch the nuts off of there. That was uh, because the nuts were just rounding themselves. Yeah, they they would not come loose. <laughs> so we had to use a torch. So there's some torch marks there. But we got them hot enough. I expanded them. And <clears throat> Excuse me again. We had them hot enough. Expanded them and expanded the nuts basically. <laughs> and uh, they just turned right off after they were, you know, four thousand degrees. <laughs> Can't be tight if it's liquid. As one of my friends says all the time. <laughs> Pretty much was, just about. Oh, there's the front of the car with the engine out. I got all the electricals just kind of hanging off the side, fuel lines, all kinds of cool stuff. This is the engine after we took off all the front back. It's, there's a crossover piece for coolant, and then that's where the water pump goes. This is a VVT, what they call a VVT sensor, which is variable valve train. And this adjusts the timing on that ever so slightly. And the, it's computer controlled and yada, yada, yada. As you can see, here, here's the evidence I was talking about. You see all this crap up here. This is the lower intake half. We have the topper, uh, the topper, the top intake off of there. The lower intake, you can see right up here, it definitely had some uh, leakage. Maybe from some of the valve covers, but partially intake. And on top of the intake as well, 
this gasket from the upper intake to the lower intake was leaking down into these little valleys up here at the top. Yeah, I think the timing cover, which is this here, uh, where these bolts go to, the timing cover I think was probably also leaking, as well as maybe the front seal. That's why we just tore it out. It's just so much easier because the engine sits in there sideways and there's no room right here because this fa uh, faces the passenger side front fender and it's about, I'd say, three to four inches away from it. So there's not much room. And then, yeah, the upper and take off. We took one of the valve covers off. These are what's called rockers. This is a push rod style engine. So. Uh, what that basically means is the uh, there's a uh, a big long shaft called a cam in about the center of the motor, and it has uh, what they call lobes on it, and these lobes go around and around, and they push up lifters, which push up the rods, which then the rods push these rockers, they pivot these are where the valves are what they call valves and pushes compresses this spring here and that opens and closes the valve as that um, can shaft spins this i can't really explain it in layman's terms i'm trying you know give me that i'm, I'm trying <laughs> kind of crazy but yeah it wasn't too bad there's a little bit of car what they call carbon buildup uh on the inside but yeah it wasn't too bad for 240,000 miles, so not a bad one at all. Uh, there's some more grease and stuff, oil, basically, on the backside. So not too bad. Uh, major leaking. I'm talking about the carbon. Yeah, the carbon wasn't too bad. There's the other side. This one's a little bit more. Uh, the reason it's this color, this dark, kind of dark chocolatey brown, uh, it wasn't getting coolant. Uh, what most mechanics would say, oh, that was getting coolant in there, possibly. Uh, no, it wasn't getting coolant. It's just these are a, what they call aluminum heads, where these rockers are, and the aluminum gets stained over time from the oil being in there. It just stains it and changes the color from like a from here, this kind of color, basically. I'm trying to point, yeah, let's see, it's kind of a, a gray gray color, kind of shinyish gray, and then, yeah, oil over time just turns it dark, just like you've seen uh, back here. This is also aluminum, and the coolant is orange, <laughs> called Dexcool, and the Dexcool stains it as well, turns it orange, so it just stains the aluminum. This is all aluminum, by the way. It's all supposed to be this color, and it's all covered in oil. <laughs> I'm not very good at this, am I? Anyway, okay, so this is with the lower intake uh, part off. This is the engine block itself, this side, and this side of the heads. Now, we were going to do head gaskets, but there's a problem with doing head gaskets on these uh, on these motors is you have to replace the bolts on these heads. You have to replace the bolts because they have what's called a torque to yield fastener, which is a bolt, but as the bolt gets torqued down for the first time, when it gets assembled, you know, when the car, when the engine and everything's brand new, these torque to yield fasteners get stretched when they get torqued down. So if you try to you use the bolts, there's a good possibility that you could snap the bolts in half, or snap the heads off of them, or essentially like that. They they say yeah, to avoid um, them breaking, it's uh, recommended that you replace the bolts. So we left the heads on. There was no evidence of the heads leaking. Like I said, if the heads were leaking, we'd be getting coolant in the oil. But the heads were not leaking, and we're getting good compression inside the cylinders. So uh, yeah, we didn't need to do head gaskets.
which is nice because them, them bolt sets can be pretty expensive and they charge the bolt set per head. You know, they can be upwards of $70, $80 a set for the GM, uh, for the OEM replacement parts, which means, um, basically means the exact part that that, uh, that came out of the vehicle goes back in the exact part rather than an aftermarket, um, of a you know, different brand or something. And there's the other side. So these are the intake gaskets on each side here. Those are just gaskets, so we wouldn't have replaced them. And yeah, they 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 weren't looking the best. As you can see, there's a little bit of a leak there. There is uh there is um a carbon buildup on that gasket. So yeah, and yeah, it just this bottom one was what was leaking. Definitely down here. And this was basically, what I did was I put most of it back together. Just kind of lightly, you know. So I wouldn't, because we weren't doing a full engine rebuild. We're only doing a gasket replacement. So I pressure washed this entire motor. So I put the valve covers back on, which are these things. This is what they're supposed to look like, this shiny aluminum color. Uh, the aluminum kind of cleaned up, but not really. Uh, it gets a little bit cleaner than this, but yeah. yeah I put the lower intake on because I'd seal it up. I put towels in here, ported up all the holes with towels so that they could, you know, take some pressure washing without allowing water inside the engine. And I was real careful up here. So I didn't, I didn't want to get water in the cylinders, which would cause very bad things to happen. And I had this off just so I can clean up the oil. Basically used uh, engine degreaser to kind of soak into a lot of the crud so I could get it power washed off. Oh, this is before I power washed it. That's right, we cleaned these beforehand but we wanted to give it a final pressure wash on those as well just to make sure and i didn't want to get any water inside the oil and don't worry the oil pan did get put back on before it got washed and then i took it off immediately afterwards <coughs> just to check it wasn't full of water i didn't want to tip it upside down with the oil pan full of water so yeah, there's the back side. This is basically after I had power washed it and used engine degreaser. I got some of it cleaned up. Not a whole lot. Not as much as I wanted. Which was, you know. But, you know, engine is starting to show its metal bits again. Instead of just being completely covered in uh, vehicle liquids. Yeah, got it nice and cleaned up. This side cleaned up a lot better. Not the head, but at least the engine itself did. It had kind of got cleaned up, but the exhausts were on it, so that kind of blocked some of the water. But that's okay. And, yep, the old oil pan gasket backside of it stuck. And this is where the flywheel normally bolts up to which is what the starter engages when you turn the key. So you turn the key, that sends power down to the starter. Starter engages the flywheel, flywheel turns. This is the crankshaft here. Um, the crankshaft here, which is connected to all the pistons. And basically turns the motor over to build compression, suck in air and fuel, ignite that air fuel mixture to then start and, uh, you know, give your vehicle life, <laughs> essentially, to put it in, you know, simpler terms. You got the oil pump here. That's what lubricates everything. So the uh, uh, the cam, which I was talking about earlier, has a gear on it, which is connected to a shaft. 
a shaft is connected to this, which turns this pump. This pump sucks in oil and gives everything lubrication. That's why oil is very important. And so is coolant to keep the engine cool enough to not get outside of normal operating temperatures. Make sure it doesn't basically overheat and start breaking parts because they're too hot. Look at this other side. I did also the engine bay, got the transmission cleaned up as much as it would. I mean, it's not the most glamorous of things. I, I am a uh, shade tree mechanic, so you know I don't have all the fancy um, parts cleaner, uh, parts cleaner machines, and and the super super high pressure um, water that they would you know normally use to power wash this all out. I got as best as the power washer would get. Some of this is just stained into the aluminum on this transmission. And then moving on. Yeah, there's some more pictures of it. I fixed this as well, these wires here. Um, I put more of this stuff. I got some more of this stuff to uh, cover up these wires because they used to have this stuff on it. But over time, when that when it gets soaked in oil uh, and the oil dries on it and stuff, it just it turns basically turns it to glass essentially. And as soon as any kind of vibration comes in, it just starts shattering apart. Yeah, this stuff here. Yeah. So we redid that as well because that goes underneath the motor and uh, kind of hangs out near the bottom of the car. So I wanted to re-protect them wires. So I got some more of that stuff and taped it on. Um, and here's engine gasket kit for replacing all the gaskets in the engine. Pretty much. Um, there was a few missing that we had to get ourselves, but this is basically the kit. This kit for this specific car, uh, any parts store, probably uh, we checked into our parts stores were going to charge us a little over $400 for this engine kit. And uh, this uh, this video is not sponsored by anybody, but we got it from rockauto.com. And instead of 400 and some odd dollars at the parts store, it was 282 for the exact same gasket kit. I know it was the exact same because the exact same brand and had the exact same gaskets in it. So, yeah, got it for almost half the price on uh, rockauto.com. That's where I shop for most of my car parts. When I'm, um, basically when I'm doing it, uh, any kind of repair work, outside of oil changes and stuff, because Rock Auto, you got to, order the parts and then they got it then you, you gotta wait for them to get shipped and stuff and oil changes you just want it done right then and there so well outside of uh, oil changes but <laughs> yeah very very good site they tons and tons of parts for a, you know I don't know how many vehicles available on there through huge ranges of vehicles and huge ranges of years and manufacturers and all that and you can get a lot of stuff really really cheap you just gotta the the only downside is the waiting that's about it but yeah we were willing to wait you know a week for this kit to get here and save almost two hundred dollars <laughs> because that's pretty insane they they mark it up almost twice the amount at a normal parts store that is you know yeah, it's the, the harsh reality of it, I guess. I mean, there's making money, and then there's gouging people. Your business, you got to make money. I get it. But you don't need to gouge people out and make millions upon millions of extra dollars that you didn't need to make. I'd say, I should say billions, probably. But whatever. That's my rant. Uh, more pictures of that. Okay, so this is after we started putting everything back together. As you see, the timing cover mostly returned back to the color it's supposed to be. 
Got a brand new gasket in behind it. Same with the water pump. This is the water pump here. Um, the cams in behind this, and this is the crank, the harmonic balancer. We had to pull this off to replace this. But yeah, and yeah, don't forget about that crossover. That crossover. You want this. Um, you want this intake on. Uh, this lower intake before you put this crossover on. Because if you put this crossover on, there's very little room to get that intake in there. It's same with the valve covers. Okay, I'm just warning you now, if you're doing a job on this engine for, you know, whatever range of Chevy Impalas there were for whatever year, if it has this engine in it, put this intake on and put these valve covers on the heads. Put those on after you put the lower intake on. Then put this crossover. We had to take this back off because this crossover comes back here where this long, really long bolt is. And this really long bolt covers uh, one of the bolt spots for that rear uh, valve or that rear valve cover. So put those covers back or the rear, yeah, rock cover, valve cover, whatever. Yeah, put those back on first and then put this crossover, which goes from here to here. Basically, just kind of crosses over like this, and it's just what what it. And if you're not sure what it is, it's a it's a coolant um, crossover. So basically, this pushes coolant throughout um, from the engine to the radiator and then back, and the coolant gets all throughout this engine, and the coolant ends up at this head here, and then from this head, it then crosses over to this head. And gets uh, coolant in here, or it's the opposite. I think it may be this side. Maybe remembering wrong, but yeah, that's basically what that crossover is. Just to transfer transfer coolant from one side, one head to the other. And so yeah, pretty simple for me anyway <laughs> to understand. And this is the engine back together. We got our chain hooked up. As you can see, we're using the proper engine lift this time. There's an engine lift spot. We couldn't get our hook on it. It's the reason we use that other one, but yeah. So there's an engine lift piece back there. What we had to do was we had to take our hook off, slide the chain through that little hole, which it was just big enough to slide the chain through, and then put our pin back in and hook the chain up that way. That was the only way it was possible for us to be able to do that. And back to the spot again. Yep. Ready to be hooked up. Are ready to be lifted it's hooked up ready to be lifted and put back into the car as you see this is the crossover i was talking about which also uh, holds the power steering pump so and you, as you can see this crossover goes all the way up here and that rear valve cover underneath this which distributes spark um, from a central the central location the uh uh, spark the spark coil pack, yeah, coil pack basically. Yeah, valve covers underneath that, so yeah, it's a bit of a pain. If you put this on first, you won't get that rear valve cover on there. Not gonna happen. Yeah, and it's back in the car. This took us about. Uh, we had tons of other stuff to do, and we've, you know, this was a side project basically, and I had to do it. I had to do most of the work myself, but like I said, I had somebody helping me. Um, essentially, you know, getting tools for me, helping me clean up the parts. I'm not demeaning their position in any way. I actually quite uh, was very thankful for the help. So don't get the wrong idea there. I was very thankful for the help on the engine. Because it would have took me a lot longer um, with my uh, terrible back and... I get uh, problems with discs, and I got arthritis and bone spurs, all kinds of. That's a whole other story for a whole other time. <laughs> but you got the engine in, uh, reassembled, and everything. Yeah. And there's transmission. It's re it's rehooked back up to the engine. All that stuff, ready to start hooking everything back up. Another picture, another picture, 
this is getting a little long, but um, yep, just kind of hooking everything up. We're trying to straighten. We removed this box here. We were trying to straighten the frame a little bit, but didn't really get anywhere. <laughs> trying to get that front end kind of straightened out a little bit. Because surprise, surprise, the broken pieces on bent up framing, the broken pieces fit pretty well. The non-broken pieces don't fit. <laughs> they don't fit at all. <laughs> and this is the engine fully hooked up. And everything's back in. The only thing that's missing is the hood. <laughs> everything's back and running. Yeah, ran. Started up and pretty much started up and ran immediately. Um, so everything worked out really, really well. So that was uh, rather nice. So, uh, before we get to that, as you can see, that bar wasn't lining up here with these two holes. So that back one, the uh, opposite side, has uh, one hole instead of two. So what I did was I measured and drilled a new hole for that bolt to go into and slid the bar back just a little bit, just that enough that it needed. And then bolted these two down, bolted that one back down. And, seem to have uh, stopped the rattling noise that was in the engine bay, which is just fine. And now the bumper. We decided we don't like this crappy bumper anymore. So this was after a bunch of work had already been done to it. Basically what we did was scraped off all the paint. That would scrape off. And, uh, oh, back to the reason why they painted it. So this is a plastic bumper, kind of a rubbery plastic. It's gloss white, you know, nothing special. It's not pearl paint that needs to go on there to match the car. It's not, or metallic, or nothing special, nothing expensive. So we called around to a few body shops, and the, uh, the lowest we could get to get this bumper professionally painted at a body shop was seven hundred and fifty dollars just for this bumper and we said hell nah hell no nah. that is hell no man that is that is more than this bumper's worth we could spend three hundred bucks buy a brand new bumper and it's already painted <laughs> to the color that it needs to be I'm going to mute for a second. <coughs> nope, that didn't work. <laughs> there we go. Had a little bit of, had a frog in my throat, as they uh, used to say. And I hit the wrong mute key, <laughs> which means the output audio capture, not the mic capture. My bad, I apologize. Anyway. Back to this bumper. <laughs> so we decided we're going to paint it ourselves. And yes, we're going to use rattle can. We spent a um, little over $100 for the sandpaper and the spray paint to do what um, the person that owns this car do what they wanted to do. And, and the reason I say that is because we did some extra, some extra stuff. So. Yeah, basically the whole bumper is pretty much white. Um, uh, sadly, at the time, it was the clear coat that we uh, were a, only the clear coat we were able to get was semi gloss, so it's kind of dull compared to the rest of the car, which is kind of sad. But from a distance, you really can't notice. But we did the best we could, and hopefully, it'll last a long time. So what we did was we chipped off all the paint all the cheap spray paint that would come off of this bumper with the scraper. And then we took uh, 400 grit sandpaper, sanded this down, um, uh, pretty much the entire thing so that we could get all the chips, make sure nothing was going to stay on there until it got painted and then chip off later. And basically sand it down and then we sanded it down again with 600. Then we sanded it down again with a thousand, and then sanded it down again with fifteen hundred, and wet sanded it. 
and finally we wit sanded it. it. Took us several hours. Took us all all day of day just to <laughs> get this one bumper. And again, I was very thankful for the help. So nothing, you know, not diminishing the person helping me at all. I'm very very thankful for their help. They're not a, they're not a mechanic, but this was <laughs> what's funny is this is their car. So the owner of the car was helping me with this project. I'm doing little bits here and there, and they're not an auto mechanic. They don't know a whole lot, so um, which I don't blame them for. They didn't go to school for it or anything, which is not a big deal. I'm just glad to have to have help and not have to do all of that work by myself. Uh, so we go next picture. This was the final bumper. Um, my picture is not that great. You can see there's like a, what looks like a, yeah, you can see this is the camera. Yeah, basically what we did was, uh, yeah, we uh, primed it, then I sand the primer, down, uh, wet sanded it with um, 1500, and then I um, I did three layers of primer, did the, the base coat, the primer, the, the, the first coat. I should say, and then did a second coat, then did a third coat, and then I sanded it down, got it all smooth, and then we did white, painted it completely, and we had uh, we had taped around these vents. They wanted purple vents, so here we are <laughs> with purple vents. So we got the purple vent here, and. The purple and the white were clashing because obviously I had to tape it off so then there was going to be a tape line that you could notice um, between the two in this little uh, body molding groove right around the edge. So I took a black, uh, some black paint and uh, basically uh, striped it inside that groove to kind of help it blend together as well as help the vents kind of pop out. Because they were complaining that, uh, you know, um, that their coworker wasn't going to notice their car anymore because it no longer was chipping paint. <laughs> so she decided that uh, that's what that's what she wanted. So she wanted purple. She likes purple, so we did purple. All right, and then on to the next one. No. Not on to the next one. I think it crashed. It may have crashed. I think it did crash. There we go. So this is what I was telling you about how, um, how when you put a new or put a uh, non-broken part, this part does not fit properly. This thing is connected to this thing, which holds the headlights in. This thing is non-broken, nothing wanted to line up, so we had to improvise a bit just to get things to kind of line up properly. As you can see, this headlight over here is different from this side. This headlight is pulled in as well as this fender is pushed out. That was from that accident. We tried the best we could to try and straighten everything a bit, but like I said, didn't get very far. And we tried. <laughs> yeah, we got this part on fully. and close to center as we could and then yeah this is this was just overhanging the headlight which is not supposed to just just what it is what it is I think it crashed again there we go all right this was the final product of the entire bumper as you can see purple vents and putting on this bumper straightened the headlight out a little bit, as well as I did some more straightening of my own. Tried it, gave it one more go, and that actually worked out pretty well. As you can see, the two different whites. If we zoom in here, see, yeah, the bumper is like a, a, it's a gloss white, really shiny, really reflective, and this is semi-gloss, not really reflective at all. But that's okay. We got her done. And that's the final view, I think. Final picture, yeah. Okay. 
so yeah that's uh that's gonna be it for this video damn i talked for nearly an hour um again thank you to all the people who have subscribed to me and who have liked the videos and you know um there hasn't been a, a video of anything this isn't really a video it's a slideshow and it wasn't prepared but it is what it is as the saying goes and uh yeah we will talk to you all next time on the next video whenever that happens probably tomorrow this will be up tomorrow as well as another part to satisfactory so it'll be a double video day go all the way back all right back to that again that's what the bumper used to look like nasty and uh yeah hopefully that this vehicle will be getting an engine rebuilt soon 5.7 liter v8 vortec motor it's got the spider injection so ooh, interesting yep this thing is 1996 chevy silverado and and we're getting up to 200,000 on the motor and we've got a slight valve tick i'm not going to explain what a valve tick is but yeah there's there's a ticking noise we'll just say that so yeah engine's getting worn out and yeah this is not the most glamorous of vehicles i know but i've had this i've had this vehicle for uh yeah somewhere between 11 and 12 years now and it's never let me down and being a mechanic i'm able to take care of it um as far as engine transmission uh transfer case thing you know basically the, of the mechanical nature of this vehicle so uh yeah until next time thanks for watching and goodbye